Now that we have some of the definitions out of the way, let's tell the story of molecular biology. This slide is called Molecular Biology 101 because it recapitulates the story that most of you are probably familiar with. So DNA, as you know, has two complementary uh, strands, and this means that, for example, an A here will base pair with a T here. The strand that runs in the three primed, five primed direction, remember these were defined by the orientation of the sugar molecules as discussed in chapter six, is called the template strand. This is the strand that is copied into RNA. Of course, the RNA now running in the five, three primed to five prime direction as it comes off as a complementary copy of what is on the DNA. This strand here that is displaced is called the coding strand and um, serves only uh, as the template for the template strand. So what happens is on the template strand, RNA polymerase, a very large enzyme, binds and it takes a base on the template strand. So the RNA polymerase is moving in this direction and it copies it into its uh, complement on the RNA. So let's see ATCG would get converted. Um, so A's complement is T, which is U in RNA, uracil. T becomes an A on the RNA, C becomes a G on the RNA, and G becomes a C. This is the RNA strand um, carrying the code, and it is called messenger RNA. The messenger RNA leaves the DNA and is engaged by the ribosome, this complex of protein and RNA, which then copies the code on the messenger RNA uh, and turns it into a protein. It does this using adapter molecules called tRNAs for transfer RNAs. Uh, these molecules contain an amino acid residue at one end and then an RNA adapter that serves to plug the amino acid into the right position to form the chain and then couples the next one in and the next one and the next one and so on, the peptide chain folds. And then in this picture here, the simplest picture of regulation, if, for example, there is a lot of this protein present uh, in excess of a desired amount, the protein might act as its own transcription factor, binding a site on the DNA that prevents the binding of the RNA polymerase there are many other ways in which the presence of protein uh, can control uh, gene expression. So usually genes are under the control of some type of feedback loop. So as you might have guessed, the story is not actually this uh, simple in uh, eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, genes uh, come split up into packages. So supposing this is a gene, which may be a thousand bases or so um, in length. In eukaryotes, the genes are split into components like this, rather like a pack of cards, in which the coding region is interspersed with non-coding regions so that one needs to reassemble the code for the protein by putting these coding regions back together into a linear chain. These non-coding regions are called introns. They used to be called junk DNA, but they have many very important control functions. These coding regions here are called exons. This is one mechanism whereby human beings with just 25,000 coding genes can produce a very complex array of protein products. If 25,000 coding genes doesn't mean very much to you, consider the fact that the humble ice plant has 260,000 coding genes. 
So what happens is the messenger RNA uh, produced in the nucleus is assembled in an organelle called the spliceosome into contiguous segments. And I'm showing you here how the rearrangement of these segments could be done in many ways. In some gene regulation processes, it is indeed done randomly uh, so that you can get an enormous number of combinations of final protein product. Uh, in other gene expression pathways, it's done deterministically. Nonetheless, you see what's happened now is this gene has become like a pack of cards capable of reassembly many different ways. So one gene, many proteins. Once the proteins have been made on ribosomes, then they are often marked in complicated ways. I mentioned, for example, the adding of a phosphate group, um, but other examples are the addition of many types of sugar molecule and so on. These are called post-translational modifications, and they mark the proteins for special tasks within the cell. There are many regulatory pathways, uh, typically based on marking the proteins in some way or another, that then control the expression of the gene as well as the way in which the gene is spliced. On top of this basic DNA machinery lies another layer of control. This slide shows two types of cell, a neuron making up part of a brain and an epithelial cell, a component of skin. If they come from, let's say, your body, they both have identical genomes in their nucleus. Here's the cell nucleus of the epithelial cell not quite so clear in the case of the neuron. There are additional levels of control. They consist partly of chemical modifications of the DNA and partly of chemical modifications of the proteins that pack the DNA into the cell nucleus. These extra codes are called the epigenetic code and they are what control the phenotype of a given cell with a common genotype but a different phenotype from one of its brother or sister cells because it has a different specialized function within the organism.